Astronomers from long ago noticed that some of the brightest stars in the sky moved with a difference than the regularity of most of the stars. And of course, those bright stars turned out to be planets. And at that time, it was assumed that all the celestial bodies orbited around the Earth, our humble little blue planet, was the center of it all. And then one fateful day, a little over 400 years ago, Galileo took his humble telescope which was designed to see ships coming out over the horizon, and he pointed it towards the sky. And that changed everything. That simple shift shifted the way that we understand the universe and shifted the way that we thought about ourselves. Because, of course, what Galileo discovered was that Jupiter had moons orbiting it. That meant they weren't orbiting the Earth. The Earth is not at the center of the universe. Game changer. And since that time, of course, our telescopes have gotten bigger and more powerful. We've been able to learn amazing things from these telescopes, but, but even the most powerful telescopes on Earth still have to contend with the Earth's atmosphere, which serves to blur and obstruct and completely obscure some parts of light. So what do we do? We put telescopes in space. The Hubble Space Telescope has been orbiting the Earth now for a little over 28 years. And it's told us amazing things about the universe. Hubble has, it's, it's really not an overstatement to say that it has fundamentally changed the way that we understand how the universe works. But more than being just a scientific tool, Hubble has become a cultural icon. The breathtaking beauty of Hubble's images have captivated the world. There's no doubt in saying these images are beautiful. But why? Why is it that we find beauty in these images? It's natural that we find beauty in pictures of sunsets or oceans or mountains. Those things are all part of our everyday experience as human beings. But galaxies aren't. Nebulae aren't. Why do we find these things beautiful? I don't think I know the answer to that question, but I like to wonder if it's not because on some deep level that we as humans know that when we look up at the heavens, that we're actually looking back at ourselves, back at our origins. The iron in your blood and the calcium in your bones was literally forged inside of a star that exploded billions of years ago in a supernova. We're connected viscerally to the universe. Hubble's beautiful images have transcended languages and national borders. They've taught us that we're also connected to each other. If I had to pick my absolute favorite image out of all the ones that Hubble has given us, this would be it. This is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Now, if you go outside tonight, look up at the stars. Every star you see in the sky will be a part of our home galaxy, the Milky Way. But in this image, Hubble stared past the Milky Way to look into the deep universe. It took a picture of a teeny tiny piece of sky. It's like looking at the universe through a straw. If you held out your pinky finger, you could cover up this tiny patch of sky. And yet, in this tiny piece of sky, Hubble sees 10,000 galaxies. Every single point of light you see here is not a star. It's an individual galaxy itself filled with hundreds of billions of stars. Hubble has shown us that the universe is almost unfathomably huge. If you imagine taking that tiny piece of sky, which this is, and multiplying it over the many times you need to fill the whole sphere of the sky, you can start to get a little bit of a sense of how big this is. Hubble has showed us that there are hundreds of billions of other galaxies, perhaps trillions of other galaxies, beyond our own. 